Okay, we are going from here, Capirote, to <clears throat> Hebba Confraternity of Penitence. Um, and we already kind of tackled this, um, confraternities, uh, confraternities of Penitence are Christian religious congregations with statutes prescribing various penitential, penitential works. They're especially popular in the Catholic Church. Pardon me. Members of the confraternities of penitence practice mortification of the flesh through fasting, the use of the discipline, the wearing of a hair shirt, among other instruments of penitence. Let's start right here. Penitential. A penitential is a book or set of church rules concerning the Christian sacrament of penance, a new manner of reconciliation with God that was first developed by Celtic or Celtic. Shoot, I always forget. Uh, by those kinds of monks in Ireland in the 6th century AD. It consisted of a list of sins and the appropriate penances prescribed for them and served as a type of manual for confessors. A penance is any act or a set of actions done out of repentance for sins committed, as well as an alternate name for the Catholic, Lutheran, Eastern Orthodox, and Oriental Orthodox sacrament of reconciliation, reconciliation pardon me, or confession. Um, sacrament is a Christian rite that is recognized as being particularly important and significant. There are various views on the existence, number, and meaning of such rites. Many Christians consider the sacraments to be a visible symbol of the reality of God. Yeah, um, let's see. List of sins. Ooh, what are sins? It is an immoral act considered to be a transgression of divine law. The doctrine of sin is central to the Christian faith, since its basic message is about redemption in Christ. Manual for confessors: A confessor is a priest who hears the confession. Whoopsie. Okay, sure. A priest um, who hears the confessions of penitents and pronounces absolution during the Dio, Dioclitianic. Dio. Dioclitianic. Diocletianic? I don't know. During the Diocletianic persecution, a number of Christians had, under torture or threat thereof, weakened in their profession of the faith. When persecution ceased under Constantine the Great, they wanted to be reunited with the church. It became the practice of the penitents to go to the confessors, who had willingly suffered for their faith and survived, willingly suffered and survived, to plead their case and the effect and effect their restoration to communion. Over time, the word came to denote any priest who had been granted the authority to hear confessions. Historically, priests were sometimes tested by officers of the church called examiners before being granted this authority. This is all a confessor. Um, and this is in Orthodoxy, Catholicism, Lutheranism, and Anglicanism. Uh, an individual may have a regular confessor, sometimes called a spiritual advisor or spiritual father, to whom they turn for confidential and uh, disinterested advice, especially on spiritual matters. Historically, this has been a common practice for Christian monarchs. It is a standard practice for a religious community of women, whether enclosed or just very large, to have one or several priests serving their spiritual needs, including being their confessor. I can see how that would end up being abused. Um, <clears throat> man, there are so many things here. Starets? What's that? A starret is an elder of an Eastern Orthodox or Eastern Catholic monastery or covenant who functions as a venerated advisor and teacher. Elders or spiritual fathers are characteristic spiritual leaders whose wisdom stems from God as obtained from ascetic experience. It is that through ascetic struggle... It is believed that through ascetic struggle, prayer, and hesychasm, hes hesychasm? I don't know this word, hesychasm, uh, the Holy Spirit bestows special gifts onto the elder, including the ability to heal, prophecy, and more importantly, give effective spiritual guidance and directions. Uh, and direction. Elders are looked upon as being an inspiration to believers and an example of saintly virtue, steadfast faith, and spiritual peace. Uh, that is, man, what is hesychasm? Hesychism? I don't know. Uh, a contemplative monastic tradition in the Eastern Christian t traditions of the Eastern Catholic Church, 
uh, is sought, okay, this, in which stillness is sought through uninterrupted Jesus prayer. While rooted in early Christian monasticism, um, it took its definitive form in the 14th century at Mount Athos. It derives hesychism. Hesychism. Okay, hesychism. Um, derives from Hesychia, Greek, meaning stillness, rest, quiet, silence. Man, ah, there's so much information here. I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole. Because I need to be able to title this. Um, yeah, man, Starrett's. Wow, this is, I don't even, I don't know what to read next. There's, there's too much. Shoot. Okay, um, so we're moving backwards here, which is good. It's good. Uh, Diocletianic, Diocletianic. Okay. Okay, so that that's the confessor. A confessor is a person, the priest that hears confessions of penitence. Okay, back to penitential. The penitential is a book or set of church rules. Um, that is a list of sins and the appropriate penances described for them, prescribed for them, rather. Okay, and it's a manual for the confessors, the people that are confessed to. The earliest origin, the earliest important penitentials were those by the Irish abbot Cumaean, who based his work on a 6th century Celtic, Celtic, sorry, I don't know, a monastic text as the Penitential Ambrosianum and Colum, uh, Columbanus, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Theodore of Tarsus. Most later penitentials are based on theirs, rather than on early earlier Roman texts. The number of Irish penitentials and their importance is cited as evidence of the particular strictness of the Irish spirituality of the 7th century. Walter J. Woods holds that over time the penitential books helped suppress homicide personal violence, theft, and other offenses that damaged the community and made the offender a target for revenge. According to Thomas Polak Oakley, uh, the penitential guides first developed in Wales, probably at St. David's, and spread by missions to Ireland. They were brought to Britain with the um, Hiberno Scottish mission and were introduced to the continent by Irish and Anglo-Saxon missionaries. Paraxis. As priests heard confessions, they began to compile unofficial handbooks that dealt with the most confessed sins and wrote down said, penance, wrote down said penances for those sins. Penances would vary given both the severity of the offense and the status of the sinner, such that the penance imposed on a bishop would generally be more severe than that imposed on a deacon for the same offense. For stealing, Cumaean prescribed that a layman sh shall do one year of penance, a cleric, two, a subdeacon, three, a deacon, four, a priest, five, a bishop, six. The list of various penitential acts imposed on the sinner to ensure reparation included more or less rigorous fast, prostrations, pro prostrations deprivation of things otherwise allowable, also alms, prayer, prayers, and pilgrimages. The duration was specified in days, quarantines, or years. Gildas, Gildas, Gildas the Wise, lists the penance for an inebriated monk. If any one, because of drunkenness, is unable to sing the psalms, being stupefied or without speech, he is deprived of dinner. The penitentials advised the confessor to inquire into the sinner's state of mind and social condition. The priest was told to ask if the sinner before him was rich or poor, educated, ill, young or old, to ask if he or she had sinned voluntarily or involuntarily, and so forth. The spiritual and mental state of the sinner, as well as his or her social status, was fundamental to the process. Moreover, some penitentials instructed the priest to ascertain the sinner's sincerity by observing posture and tone of voice. Okay, they're psychologists. Penitentials, or, so, I don't know. Uh, penitentials, I probably used the wrong term for occupation. Whatever. Um, they're the mentalist. How about that? P 
penitentials were soon compiled with the authorization of bishops concerned with enforcing uniform disciplinary standards within a given district. Commutation. The penitential of Cumaean, uh, of Cumaean counseled a priest to take into consideration in imposing a penance the penitent's strengths and weaknesses. Those who could not fast were obliged instead to recite daily a certain number of psalms to give alms or perform, perform some other penitential exercise as determined by the confessor. Some penances could be commuted through payments or substitutions. While the sanctions in early penitentials, such as that of Gildas, were primarily acts of mortification, or in some cases excommunication, the inclusion of fines in later compilations derived from secular law and indicate a church becoming assimilated into the larger society. The connection with the principles embodied in law codes, which were largely composed of schedules or wergold, wer, wer, ver, vergild? schedules of vergold or compensation, are evidence. Recidivism was always possible, and the commutation of sentence by payment of cash perpetuated the notion that salvation could be bought. Mm. Commutations and the intersection of ecclesiastical penance with secular law both, di both differed from locality to locality. Sorry, they both differed from locality to locality. Nor were commutations strictly to financial payments. Extreme fasts and recita recitation of large numbers of psalms could also commute penances. The system of commutation did not reinforce commonplace connections with poverty and sinfulness, even though it favored people of means and education over those without such advantages. But the idea that whole communities, from top to bottom, richest to poorest, submitted to the same form of ecclesiastical discipline is itself misleading. For example, meat was a rarity in the diet of the poor, with or without the imposition of ecclesiastical fasts. In addition, the system of public penance was not replaced by private penance. The penitentials themselves refer to public pen penitential ceremonies. Uh, opposition: The Council of Paris of the Council of Paris of 829 condemned penitentials. The Council of Paris of 829. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's a year. That's a year. I. Okay, the Council of Paris of 829 condemned the penitentials, and ordered all of them to be burnt. In practice, a penitential remained one of the few books that a, that a country priest might have possessed. Some argue that the last penitential was composed by Alain de Lille, I don't know, in, a, in 1180, 1180. The objections of the Council of Paris concerned penitentials of uncertain authorship or origin. Penitentials continued to be written, edited, adapted, and, in England, translated into the vernacular. They served an important role in the education of priests, as well as in the disciplinary and devotional practices of the laity. Penitentials did not go out of existence in the late 12th century. Robert of Flamborough wrote his Liber Po Pointen Dalias in uh, 1208. And here we have some penitentials listed which, yeah, are just big lists of sins and your penance for it. It's just a guidebook. Cool. Penitential. Um, <laughs> so all that, all that was uh, penitential. Um, confraternity. Let's take, well, actually, sorry, let's look at, mm, uh, so confraternities of penitence. Christian religious congregations with statutes prescribing various penitential works. Okay. With statutes prescribing various, now we know penitential, describing very, uh, pre prescribing rather various penitential works. Um, confraternities. Generally a Christian voluntary association of lay people. Laity consists of all members who are not part of the clergy usually including any non-ordained members of religious orders. Um, association, Voluntary Association of Lay People, created for the purpose of promoting special works of Christian charity or piety, and approved by the church hierarchy. They are most common among Roman Catholics, Anglicans, Lutherans, and the Western Orthodox. 
when a Catholic confraternity has received the authority to aggregate to itself groups erected in other localities, it is called an archconfraternity. Examples include the various confraternities of penitents and the confraternities of the cord, as well as the confraternity of the rosary. Confraternities of the cord are pious associations of Christians, the members of which wear a cord, girdle, or cincher, cin- cin- Okay, yeah. Censure in honor of a Catholic saint or angel whom they wish to honor and emulate. Do we have any pictures? Mm, Kind of, but uh, there's a cord. I was mainly looking for the cords. Okay, okay. St. Philomena. Hmm. Interesting. Catholicism is very interesting. (laughs) Confraternity of the Rosary. Um, members of the confraternity strive to pray the entire Holy Rosary weekly. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. Members of a confraternity of penitents leading a Lent procession in Spain. Man, they look like they're the freaking undertaker. Hmm, how interesting. Hey, white Jesus. Cool. Um, So confraternity history. Pious associations of laymen existed in very ancient times at Constantinople and Alexandria. In France, in the 8th and 9th centuries, the laws of the uh, Carlovingians. Is it Carlovingians or... Carlo Vingians. The laws of the Carlo Vingian? That feels better. Carlo Ving. Car, 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 <laughs> wait, or is it a typo? Carlo Vingian, Carolingus, Carolings. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Carlo Vingians. I like Carlo Vingians. In France, in the 8th and 9th centuries, the laws of the Carlovingians mentioned confraternities and guilds. I might disappear very quickly here. I think my roommate's about to come down. Uh, But the first confraternity in the modern and proper sense of the word is said to have been founded at Paris by Bishop Odo. He's a changeling. Uh, It was under the invocation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Confraternities had their beginnings in the early Middle Ages and developed rapidly from the end of the 12th century. The main object, the main object and duty of these societies were, above all, the practice of piety and works of charity. Some confraternities were very widely spread, especially in the cities of the Middle Ages. Confraternities could be important and wealthy institutions for the elite, as in, for example, the Scuole Grandi of Venice. The purgatorial societies and orders of flagellants were other specialized medieval st- medieval types. Let's look briefly. Purgatorial societies are Roman Catholic Church associations or confraternities which aim to assist souls in purgatory reach heaven. The doctrine concerning purgatory, the condition of the poor souls after death, the communion of saints, and the satisfaction value, the satisfactory value of our good works from the basis, blah, blah, blah. Order of conflagellants. Central Italian flagellant confraternities evolved and emerged from Central Italian confraternities that originated... Man, these words are just becoming meaningless to me. <laughs> I need to give it a rest. Um, were other specialized with medieval types. The medieval French term puy, puy, uh, designated a confraternity dedicated to an artistic performance in music, song, and poetry. The German Meistersingers were similar. Meistersingers, okay. Uh, though typically imitating trade guilds in form. Starting in the 14th century, northern France saw the rise of confraternities and other lay communities of men and women, organized around trades and religious devotions dedicated to specific patron saints. Various other congregations, such as the Holy Trinity of the Scapular, etc., were founded between the 13th and 16th centuries. From the later centuries, uh, sorry, from the latter century onwards, these pious associations have uh, 
PS pie chart nipped up um, word. I, why am I this? Uh, my brain. Okay. Um, I'm struggling here. Okay, good. Pious, pious, pious. I don't know. I was like, pious? No. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This pious association from, from the latter century onward, so the 16th century onward. Um, nope, I'm sorry, from the 13th century onward is the latter century. Uh, these pious associations have multiplied greatly. The Arch Confraternity of the Gonfalone um, was headquartered in the Church of St. Lucia del Gonf Gonfalone. Because of their white hooded robes, they are identified as the White Penitents. They were established in 1264 at Rome. Uh, at Rome, Saint Bonaventure, at that time Inquisitor General of the Holy Office, prescribed the rules and the white habit with the name Recommend Recommendati BV. BV. Membership. Each confraternity organization has a set of rules or bylaws to follow, which every member promises to live by. Even though the Catholic Church works in harmony with the confraternity, these rules are not religious vows, instead merely rules set up to govern the confraternal organization. Some confraternities allow only men, while others allow only women or only youth. Activities The relig religiosity of the members and their desire for a personal reward in the afterlife were reflected in the confraternity activities, such as assisting with burials by donating burial robes or monetary payment, attending the burial, burial mass, volunteering in the local hospitals, organization of and participation in religious feast days, giving dowries for local orphans, selling and preparing bread used for local religious holidays, escorting the condemned during the Inquisition, <laughs> God bless him, um, burying the dead during epidemics and other charitable acts as deemed appropriate by the confraternity members or parish priest. Society could not function strictly through government programs because there was also a need to take care of matters such as burials and provide for the poor and indignant. No, that's not it. <laughs> indignant. Uh, indigent. In, in, I don't know this word. I'm sorry. Indigent. Okay. Poor or needy. Indigent. Hmm, that's new to me. While government can and did maintain programs to handle these needs, they were better managed by lay organizations or the neighbor helping neighbor theory. Examples. The term may have, may have other meanings. The Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception is a renowned lay Marian uh, apostolate in the Philippines known for administering the Grand Marian Procession Parade on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Oh! Cool. The Confraternity of the Blessed Sacrament is an example of an Anglo-Catholic fraternity established in the Church of England, which has spread to many places within the Anglican community of churches. Members of the Augustana Confraternity, which is in the Lutheran tradition, devote themselves to the teachings of Holy Scripture and to the elucidation of those teachings in the confessional writings of the Lutheran Church, particularly the Small Catechism. Okay. So this had a lot of legalism within it, um, which uh, very generally means like um, bound down to rules. Uh, I'm tired. Uh, it's like religious. Uh, it, it's basically when people say that they're like religious and like strict religious, it's kind of bad. Like, you know, you um, if you're legalistic, you feel you have to follow um, X, Y, Z. Otherwise, you're damned. Um, and that whole... Where did it go? The penitential. That stuff sounds extremely legalistic. Um, and the fact that confraternities had to um, participate in all this stuff in order to gain their reward. That sounds legalistic. It isn't explicitly, but it sounds it. Okay. Um, we're going to come back and hopefully do that. Um, the discipline and the hair shirt may be instruments of penance, but man... After that, I, I really probably need to just forget about this whole Catholic thing because whew, there is a lot of words and a lot of history. And look at all these different penitents. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we'll get through it. <laughs> 